What's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up in the morning? Pussy. Hot or cold? Pussy? Nah. <laughs> 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 Just in general, nigga. Uh, the motherfucker didn't have no fantasies about getting in the dope game and staying in there for life. I've learned to not really give a bit of a fuck. If you live for the cheers, you'll die by the boobs. Oh, wait. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. I need more of it. I need to see more of it. We need to do something to go. Why not? Not why? <laughs> Atlanta runs the fucking rap game. Mm. How the fuck do that sound and how does that feel? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, players and pimps, welcome to the GGN News Network. I'm your host with the most fine, Nemo, AKA Nemo Hoes. And today I got a real special guest. I'm talking about the king, the Kang, man from ATL, the one and only, my brother, my homie, my friend, Tip Tip, T.I. is in the building. You did. What's up, player? What's going on, OG? Man, I'm so proud of you, man. You, you doing so many big things and, and, and making so many, you know, business moves and, you know, putting, putting your business hand out there, being real constructive and, and teaching us how to do it. You know what I'm saying? I wanna, I wanna give you props before we even start the interview on how you just took your trap hand and made it a business hand. Man, that was always that was always the idea, you know what I'm saying? A motherfucker didn't have no fantasies about getting in the dope game and staying in there for life. Why? Right. You know, it was all about, you know what I'm saying, just working my way up to a point where I could create other opportunities for myself and as soon as those things start happening, you know, execution was key. Do you believe that a lot of ex drug dealers are great Fortune five hundred businessmen if they're given the opportunity? Absolutely. If you can run a corner, you can run a business. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if not for the dope game, I always say this is is as much of a travesty as the crack era uh, and the war on drugs has been. You know what I'm saying? As many lives have been lost, as much freedom has been taken away. Um, I still must say that we would not have had as much of an opportunity mm. uh, to handle uh, large funds and have an entrepreneurial spirit. You dig what I'm saying? Right. If it wasn't for the dope game. And a lot of entrepreneurs was, was birthed out of that. As a matter of fact, I use this example all the time. <laughs> Easy E being a well-known drug dealer yeah, at the time, right. you know, uh, his, 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 I guess, the, the results of him doing so afforded him the opportunity to invest yes. in the dreams of yes. one young Dr. Drake. Hello. Okay, so had it not been for the dope money, then that dream would have been a nightmare. And Dr. Dre is now a billionaire. Hello. You dig what I'm saying? Right. So I think what the devil means for bad, God uses for good. True indeed. And I'm, I'm going to attest to the, to the dope game because I come from it. I, never, right. I could never get to the big fish in the dope game. Right. But I could always, you know, maintain and have what I needed. But once I got into the rap game, right. I took what I learned from the dope game as right. far as how the big fish would always fall off right. or get cracked right. or get told on. So I was yeah. like, I'm gonna move minds a little bit different when uh -huh. I get that position of love. I'm gonna show love all the way from top to bottom as opposed to some big fishes in that world, you gotta be shrewd, you gotta be, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Cause what comes with it. But I was like, when I get that ball stick, I'm gonna do it a little bit different. Is that what you did when you got it? I mean, man, for me, for me, man, I think that I had to grow into uh, my understanding of, of what my position entailed, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. uh, when I first came in, like, you know, it wasn't, I didn't really have a lot of people to go to for, for information, for guidance, for, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, it wasn't until later on in my career when I was, you know what I'm saying, when I was introduced to people like you and Jay and, right. you know what I'm saying, and Puff and so on. But as far as from Atlanta. No mentorship. I mean, everybody would just really got, you know, so, you know, caught up in doing their own thing, rightfully so. But it wasn't really no time for no turning back and teaching nobody nothing. We on the road. You so know you know basically I mean? had to have a hard knock life to where you had to learn that shit as you went. Bumps and bruises, trial and error. You right, know what I mean? Right. So, so when I got to that position, I kind of had incoherently trained myself right. to think 
experience. You know, let a motherfucker get it how I got it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I later found out that, you know what I'm saying, that I, I, I should, I should correct my ways, you know what I mean? Which I've done now, and I think, you know what I'm saying? It's, you're so great at that now as far as like the way you give understanding and you teach, because you're a teacher now. I, and like you said, nobody taught you. You had to learn on your own, but that your blessings are that you learn how to teach. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and by, by teaching, you give an opportunity to other people to become businessmen and, and to further their dreams. They may not get it right. Like, I watch your show, and you be hard on them. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, fuck it. The, the industry going to be harder than him. Yeah, yeah. Like, but they don't know that. that you nice. Yeah. As I, I'm saying you hard, but they don't know you nice compared to what the what, fucking industry. Exactly. Man, on. please. Yes, yeah, sir. I mean, man, it's, it, it, it goes without saying, but it's nothing like, you know, having to recover, ha having to recover from a loss. Like that shows you exactly whether two things: one, whether you built for this shit, and two, whether or not you really want this shit. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? So I think that you know that's the best. That's the best teacher. I can instruct you, but ain't nothing gonna teach you like a loss. <laughs> right. I, I say I take my losses like I take my wins, right? Right on. Every loss that I took made me better. It prepared me for the win. Right on. And sometimes when I win, it's, it's a loss because I think I did it right. I think I perfected it. Right. But in every win, there's something you did wrong. That's right. So you got to know how to take your wins like you take your losses. That, hey, man, that make a lot of sense. Now, with the TV show with uh, you and your wife and your kids, I told you I was a fan right. of that when Major and them was little bitty babies. <laughs> like, yeah. like, what made you say, you know what, I want to put my family on front street? Because this is a world right now where... Right. Some people put their family on there and it's a wrap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But hey. you handled that. You put it out there like you, you make me and my family, you inspire us to 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 want to stay together, to want to be together, to want to like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's a, a reflection. It's a blessing. I mean, as far as what made me, uh, what brought about the idea or the consideration, um, I was in prison and I was noticing it. Everything that was reported about me, every time something was written about me, it always reflected back to one or two isolated moments. Mm. So I felt like, well, maybe that's because I, I haven't given them enough. Mm. I haven't given enough. To, uh, you ain't put enough material out there for them to work them with. I ain't showed them enough sides. Yeah, you know better work with more material. That's the only thing they got. So, I mean, I was like, well, what I, the plan was to show how diverse my lifestyle was, you know what I'm saying, to show how much of a family man, a business man, and, so, and how it's hard like, being all show, three. Exactly, how to show I was all these things and not just that one thing by these few that things you see that you see in the headline. Isolation. Yeah, but in doing so, Nigga, your family became we stars, nigga. We found out nigga, the kids stars, were nigga. stars. <laughs> you won't get out of here. I them never, never stars, seen man. them act like that until the show stars, came Stars, man. <laughs> and, for, and for a star that's from the outside looking in, yeah. we can always see a star. Like, you right. can look at anybody else's house and be like, oh, your baby's a star. Right, uh, but it's hard for you to see that. Nah, nigga, I know, it's a house full of stars over hell, there, nigga. man. But the thing is, they, they didn't find their voice until the cameras came on. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, how did that happen? What it's that kind of like this, right? It's kind of like, you know how when you and your old lady in the room, the kids going to talk to each other a certain kind of different. way. But then when you walk out that room, they're going to talk completely <laughs> different. They're going to be some completely different kids. So when the show came on, when the camera came out, that gave me an opportunity to, to kind of see how they are when I'm not really around. Right, because you know they don't show you and tell you everything. Right, right. You know, and that was, you know, it was, it was a pleasant surprise. And shit, they took the show over, so it's man, all, you I, know I, what I, mean? love, I love that because that's black excellence. That's black love. That's stability. That's what a nigga come home to. Right See, on. they don't understand. When you got that, you got to come home. Yeah. Like, if you ain't got that, then you can stay out all night. <laughs> I go to the club. I can, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't understand that part yeah. right there. That's the shit make you go home to make you see tomorrow. That's to right. To make you have that hustle. To make you have that grind. That's real. Man, please. I respect that, my nigga. I, I respect for you. I got so much respect for you for putting it out there man. like that and then doing it the right way. Man, I, man, you had a show too. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but, I, but, that, but I respect yeah. it like because I know what it takes. I know how hard that is when you put it out there. It's like people be picking and yeah. like anything I do, they try to reflect it on them. Yeah, well, you know, I kind of, I've learned to not really give a bit of a fuck about, you know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. you know, like, if you live for the cheers, you'll die by the booze. Oh, wait. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. 
So, you know, I don't let no compliment get me too gas, and I don't let no criticism get me too down. You know what I mean? I just take it like, you know, it's th that opinion is more of a reflection of them than it is of me. So I try not to, you know what I'm saying, get caught up in that shit too often. So, so your music hand, right? Uh-huh. From the first time that we heard you to the last time we heard you mm -hmm. on Dime Trap, how do you think that you've grown as an artist? I think I've diversified, you know what I'm saying? I think that I've, uh, I've raised a certain level of consciousness in, in my music more so now than before. Before, like I hadn't got caught up in the, in the in the cycle of Jay got and continue to produce hit records. Mm -hmm. Just just keep putting out hit records. You know what I'm saying? I had become like a machine. You know what I'm saying? Just putting that shit out. But it wasn't. I don't think I I don't think that I I, I gave as much insight on the perspective right. then as much as I do now. You did. That comes with wisdom, though. You, you yeah. got wisdom now. You know what you're speaking to. I think when you was a young rapper. You didn't really give a fuck about who you were speaking to. That's it. I ain't, you know I ain't what I'm saying? Damn. And then right. when you start getting fans, it made you consider, right. like, damn, I didn't know you was my fan. <laughs> I, gotta, damn, I didn't know you liked me, so it's like I gotta. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that the talk. crazy shit? Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, man, you know, to. I don't really. I never really considered, like, how how major it was to have fans and people who would drive miles and miles, hours Love to see the you. the fuck and, out of you. You know what I mean? I never really understood that shit really until I caught my case. When they it, was there for you when yeah. some of the homies wasn't. You dig? <laughs> how, how about that? Yeah. yeah. Homies turn their back like, oh, I'm gonna holler at you, Tip. I'll be there when you get Yeah, there. you know what I'm saying? They're quite natural, man. Motherfucker catch a case you pose to get there. But the fans, the fans fan don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's right. The they fans coming the, to see outside, you. They was outside the federal visit, building. Nigga, I, don't, I know I don't know you, but can <laughs> I visit you? You know what I'm saying? They was outside the federal building with. Come on, with, man. With, uh, all kinds of signs held up, yeah, Shout man. out to all of the fans that came to visit T.I. I know he gave y'all love Cheers. once before, but ain't nothing like giving it up one more time, you man. Y'all show love, man. Real niggas and appreciate everybody that. Everybody who showed up to my bar here, because I believe they had some, you know, had a, a, a bit of a hand in the judge granting me a $3 million house arrest. Right, bro. to stay home with the yeah, family. Yeah, absolutely. Live man. a little bit. I mean, and you didn't violate at all. Nah. <laughs> we don't violate. <clears throat> We're not going to break the law. We may bend it, but we ain't going to break it. You did. Yeah. You did you. Not be a, not, not, at least not to the naked eye. <laughs> <laughs> so look, movie-wise, I already told you, dog, I love you as an actor. Thank you so much, man. The movie that you did, Takers, was that the name of it? Yeah. I met, I think, the director or the writer. Who, who directed that? Uh, Listen, Hop, John, listen, Hop. Goddamn Hub. right, I met yeah. him. And I told him, I said, nigga, you better not ever leave me out of no shit like that, nigga. That was one of the coldest movies I ever seen, man. Hey, we had a great time, man. Rest in peace, Paul Walker. I mean, we did our thing. Man, we, I, I love you on the big screen, Tip. You never cease to amaze, cuz. Right you are on. a great fucking actor, cuz. Man, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate more of it, cuz. I need more of it. I need to see more of it, cuz. We need to do something together. Why not? Now why? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't you and Mike Epps got something coming out? Yeah, man. We did something, man, called The Trap. Yeah, yeah. I, I seen y'all sneaking pictures to it, nigga. I was yeah, like, okay, that look was... fun. Y'all was like brothers or some shit. Yeah. You don't want to tell the plot of the movie? You want to leave it alone? Man, it, it, it's, a, it's a real, it's a real, uh, I guess, grassroots comedy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta, ATL? Yeah, set in Atlanta. Say you that. You know what I'm saying? Rooted in, deeply rooted in a world that we all familiar with. Say that. But you know, so, so let's it's say. It's needed, right? Let's it's the kind of movie that's needed. Absolutely. Let's say two brothers get themselves in a bind and one has a completely different idea of how to work his way out. Oh, man. The other. <laughs> Sound like me and my brothers all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's a dope. I mean, it's a. Uh, a good time. But you don't do nothing halfway, no way, nigga. You know how you get out, man. I try not to do no, no bullshit. You, you, <laughs> you don't. And nigga be watching and be like, let me see if this nigga gonna do mm. something. Nigga be really expecting to see I if try a not nigga to do gonna no drop bullshit. some. You don't do it. Yeah. Is I, it hard saying no sometimes? Because I know bullshit come your way a lot. Like, Tip, we have this great movie opportunity for you to be in and just play this role. Please, come on. Mm, I mean, nah, it ain't. Oh, you just so real. You be like, fuck nah, it, I ain't fucking with like, it. just like, you just gotta ask yourself, like, you know what I'm saying? What you trying to do and does this serve that purpose? And shit, if that shit don't feed my spirit, if it don't speak to me, I don't fuck with it. Mm. 
Now, this is some real shit I'm about to say right here. Okay. When I first came out, the East Coast was running the rap game. Right on. Then when I came out, we was balanced with the East Coast. Right. Around the time you came out, it was the balance of East and West. Mm -hmm. Now, Atlanta runs the fucking rap game. Mm. How the fuck do that sound and how does that feel? Nah, man, it's an extreme blessing. God damn, I'm talking about run the game, nigga, chokehold for a couple of years now, nigga. Not like no overnight, like we got it for six months, nigga. Yeah. Niggas rap like y'all now. Niggas I, act like y'all yeah. now. Yeah, Can you right. believe that part, Tim? Right. Yeah, that shit, I mean. No, it's crazy. It's, uh, I think Dre and Outkast laid the foundation. True indeed. When they said, Oh, the South, the, the South got something to say. Nigga, to say. I was there. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you had quite a moment I, yourself. Then. I was there, nigga. It was hostile. Yeah. They said that because niggas booed them. Right, right. See, y'all didn't see the real. They I got, did. they won and got booed. What? They got booed, nigga. Dre was like, nigga, fuck that, nigga. <laughs> nigga, the South got something to say, nigga. That's and went real. on a mission. I think, you know what I'm saying? It was that, 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 that spark. They lit the they lit the torch. Mm. This they're still being passed on. Boy, you day. niggas ain't letting go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much diversity, man. You got so many different types of artists. You know what I mean? So it's so, so crazy, much. cause that nigga, the Mecca is Atlanta. Yeah. You don't hear me. The Mecca yeah. is Atlanta, nigga. Like it ain't New York no more. It ain't L.A. no more. Like nigga, you have to pass through Atlanta a, and be approved by them first. It's a blessing to be a part of something so legendary. And you one of the the faces on the Mount Rushmore up there. You understand what I'm talking about? Shit, I sure appreciate that. No, it is what it is. It's all you know, a, you JD. It's a couple of you niggas. You, it's uh, all a outcast. Blessing. There's some niggas up there that's been doing it for a long time that put that foundation down to where. They made it easy for the Migos and the guys that's the Gucci mans and all them niggas that's right. rocking and holding on to the tradition and futures and all them niggas, because it's a foundation. Right, absolutely. It's a foundation before y'all got here, so now y'all hold on to it and run with it like we couldn't. Everybody did, they poured, you dig what I'm saying? Completely. Like, you know what I'm saying? When OutKid came out, like, they weren't even trying to play motherfuckers sound like us on the radio, for no. real. No, You know? We played them. Yeah, I mean, we, we fucked with more them so I hear than they did up in New York. They was our cousins from the South. Yeah. See, that's how we- Most that's motherfuckers, how, man, most motherfuckers migrated from the South regardless wherever you from. But the way, but the perception music-wise, let me tell you how we, we perceive music. East Coast niggas too hard to impress. <laughs> them are cousins from the South, so right. we're gonna put our arms around them, right on. and we're gonna try to outwrap these New York niggas. Right on. That's just mentality, the niggas knew that, that's what it was. <laughs> it was competition, it was constructive co competition that was right. bred from rap early on. And once you got good enough to where they respect you, right. then it was no more competition, it was respect. Yeah. But that's what hip hop was built on, nigga. You got to earn respect from them niggas over there, they run this shit. Yeah, absolutely. And now shit, they trying to earn shit. hours. Y'all run this shit. I niggas think. rapping like Atlanta niggas now, everywhere. <laughs> I can't believe it, cuz. That shit here. Yeah. I mean, you know, from being the sound that motherfuckers said was gonna kill hip hop, you dig what I'm saying? To, to now it's the sound that runs the shit. That, that shit you can't crazy. go without. You better have yeah. a trap song on your album if you're trying to sell Man, something. I remember motherfuckers like that. When I dropped trap music, they wouldn't play Dope Boys. I mean, excuse me, when I dropped, I'm serious. They wouldn't play Dope Boys. The only station that would play Dope Boys, Dope Boys in the Trap, was Greg Street. My nigga Greg Street, you know the motorbike, a rare breed. He's and, a rare breed biker. All the way in the ATM. And, and, and it goes from that to Future having the number one record with Percocet, Percocet, Miley Percocet. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, so it just took a lot of... You know, for me, the Jeezy, the, you know, whomever, whomever. Kicking whomever. doors down, kicking yeah, them down. Yeah, yeah, just constantly, you know, making this shit not just accepted, but making it be demand, in demand. Right, nigga, we telling you what it is. Yeah. We ain't asking for your approval, we telling you what Absolutely. it is. Absolutely, because we, 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 we run the motherfucking temperature. Mm. That's gangster. You got to respect that. Shout out to all of the homies in the A, because right I on. was there in the beginning when niggas didn't respect y'all. Now you niggas got to... Big chip on your shoulder, and y'all doing a great job of holding this hip hop game down. And I love it. Speaking of which, whenever you guys are in Atlanta, please check out the Trap Music Museum. Oh, for real? Yeah, absolutely. Address, please. Uh, Six Thirty Travis Street. Yeah, yeah. please check Catch out. Catch an Uber there if you ain't driving. You know what I'm saying? Check out the Trap Music Museum. It's um, a collection of exhibits and installations that all celebrate 
and recognize the most significant contributors to the culture and subgenre of trap music. And a lot of information, because there's been a lot of, you know what I'm saying, discrepancy, man, a lot of back and forth. So we felt like, you know what I'm saying, just to display the facts in a way and to tell our story. From your own and perspective. Our voice before Thank you. another motherfucker Thank you. come in and Water try to tell shit it for down. us. Yeah. You know, we felt like it was, you know, important for, for the city, for the culture, and, you know, for the for the for the genre. And for people from outside yeah. that don't know no better, that, that got a small perception of what it is. Sure. We need to know the truth. We need to know what it is from y'all personally. To inform and inspire. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Do you see yourself now as an activist? Because as, <laughs> as you get older on some real shit, dog, as, and I find myself being the same way. Right. And I don't want to be, but sometimes I have to be the voice yeah. for the voiceless. And just I just speak like I'm a politician or speak like I'm an activist. Right. Do you feel like that is who you becoming in some sort of right? I mean, I don't want to take any credit or, or attention or any light away from the, the, the organizers who are boots on the ground every day right. by calling myself the same thing that they're called. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? I mean I, I'm active. <laughs> Very active. Very active. I'm active, but I don't want to disrespect what those people do every right. day by calling me an activist. It's just like, you know, if a motherfucker get up out the bed and go outside and got that rap for his friends on the <laughs> corner, it ain't fair for him to call himself a rapper. Right, right. If that's what we calling ourselves, right. we done put in, you know what I'm right. saying? But so, if the activists proclaim you to be an activist, you can't deny it. I will, you understand me? I will humbly accept <laughs> that nomination. Because you becoming that tip. I seen you on the news, nigga. <laughs> they, had, they had real people on there. Then my nephew popped on there like, <laughs> a real <laughs> activist <laughs> rapper. T.I. I said, what? Activist? I got to ask this nigga. Is he really activist? <laughs> they label you activist because, I mean, it I is mean. what it is because your voice is strong. See, an activist is not by what he does, but who he empowers and how he speaks for those who are voiceless. Right. And if you can do that, then you become an activist because you're actively speaking for those who don't have a voice. Right, I mean, that's always been uh, my definite intention was to speak for people who, who wasn't in a position for, to speak for themselves. Um, it, it's an honor and a blessing to be able to continue, to have been able to continue to do so for so long and to still be relevant for doing so today. And there's certain things, like I know we sit at home sometimes and it's just like, we hear about information and it just, it just ticks us off and we just gotta, <laughs> we gotta go right to the world and tell them like how we feel. Is that mm. how it is? Cause I know it don't be no, cause I think sometimes people be feeling like, somebody be like, hey Tip, did you hear about this? <laughs> I think you should go on there and say this. Yeah, I don't just, I don't let nobody. But that's what I'm. Remote but you gotta control let, you gotta let motherfuckers know that that's just you. They yeah. know it's me. They know I get up in the morning. Like, <laughs> that nigga dog just woke up and said some shit about this nigga. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't gonna let nobody remote control me, man. Like, like I said, man. If it don't talk, to me, if it don't feed my spirit, don't talk to me. It don't move me. I'm not gonna. I ain't gonna be fake moved. Right. And. I try to follow my first, my first mind, because even if I was moved about it, but I chose not to say something, I chose not to say nothing, I just pull back and just, you know what I'm saying? I try and give 72 hours. Right. And if I still Reflection. feel that way, you know what I'm saying? Reflection. I send it two hours. Boy, boy, you could be a psychiatrist with that cold 72 hours. That nigga say I'm trying to pull back on you for 72 hours. <laughs> Get my reflection on, reflect on what you meditate, said. Meditate, man. I'm a meditate I'm a marinate. Reflect on what you said. You know what I'm saying? Hi, my name is Stormy Friends, and I bring you the weather city to city, titty to titty. And today I'm giving you the weather from Longdong, China. There's going to be a nice cock storm for you, so you don't, might not want to stay inside. I don't want to stay inside. <laughs> you want to be in a cock storm? Yeah. That's a lot of cocks. I feel like that's fun. <laughs> How do you balance work and family life? Cause that's that's, that's a juggling act with me. Not very well. <laughs> Not very well. I mean, man, as you know, the more kids you have, the more expenses and necessity there is. And the older they get, wow. the more expensive it gets. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you just got to continue to generate opportunity and monetize, you know, 
the monetize yourself and your brand and your ideas so you can continue to keep that shit going. But that's the greatest investment I've ever made, though. Babies. You know what I mean? Of time and, and, and money and resources, everything. I agree, I agree. You I know got what grandbabies mean? now, so. Woo! That's, that's, the great, that's the great return right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's when the payments start paying son, off. Right? I, tell, I told my son, Dominica, he always. He be shooting me. He be shooting me with the, you know, school. It ain't. It ain't real. We don't <laughs> need it. Why are you making me do this? I say, man, just wait. Do you have a son, man? Yeah. I'm gonna start telling him the same thing you told you telling me, and I'm gonna watch how you deal with it. Yeah, because Grandpa gonna have more influence. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him, man. Hell no. What you gotta go to school for? <laughs> you don't need that shit. Let him drop out. <laughs> you don't need that shit. Come on, man. That's what you wanna do, right? But look, grandpa influences more than daddies, though. <laughs> you gotta know that part. His grandpa ain't gotta just watch him all the time. Grandpa <laughs> spent 15 minutes buying a few toys and sitting on his way. Every time he sees grandpa, it's a, it's a love thing with grandpa, man. That's the part I'm winning at right now. When they see Papa, they say, Papa, you got my gifts? Yep. <laughs> How much time you want, Papa? 15, 20 minutes? Let's go on Instagram real quick. Go run around outside. All right, Papa, go on. I'm tired. <laughs> it's been real. I'll at you next week. Man, shit, I, I, I tell them all the time, y'all better get to strapping up. I'm too young to be a granddaddy. Grandpa. I can see you being a Papa one Man, day. Man, when one day? Yeah, you're going to be a Papa. I got some years to go. Yeah, you're going to be a Papa one day. You're going to join the club. I ain't going to be the only motherfucking right. rapper right, grandfather. Man, listen, man. If that's, what, <laughs> if that's what Destiny has in store for me, so be it. Come on, Tim. Join the club. I ain't going to be the only goddamn rapping Shit, grandfather. It's going to take me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> got to get there. Man in the real white tip. Man, this shit here, man, dope as hell, man. The spaceship. Hey, man, we trying to make it happen. This shit man. dope as hell. I'm under the radar, man. I'm low key. I don't do too much talking. I just try to make it happen. Uh, you bossing up big as a son, bitch, bro. Come on, dog. <laughs> I'm trying to stick around, man. Have some fun. Be here for y'all. We inside the Smoker Studio, Everyday People, AKA Real Nigga Shit. I wanna offer you one of these right here. Don't mind if I do, sir. That's that maple wood right there, that Mike Epps version. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go and put some fire yeah, in there, brother, too. That's yours, you know what I'm talking about? Well, I can't pass up the opportunity yeah. to smoke with the put dog. Some light on that for you, then. It'd be yeah, my let honor. Let me get this motherfucker out of here first. It'd be my honor to light that for you, Absolutely, tip. Absolutely, sir. Let me put some fire on the tip for tip. There you go, man. Put some fire on the end of that tip for tip. That's that glass tip, too, you know what I'm talking about? One more again. Oh, you in there now. We inside the Smoker Studio, everyday people, AKA real nigga shit, I'm gonna ask you some questions and you answer to your best of your ability. Tacos or hamburgers? Fish tacos. Ass or titties? Ass. What's your favorite pair of shoes of all time? Jordan Double Threes. What's your favorite cereal of all time? Oh, not a big cereal guy. Uh, granola. Mm. How many times a day? <laughs> How many times a day do you think about sex? Well, I say see answers number what. <laughs> 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 nah, but you know what I'm saying. Everybody, I think everybody think about you know sex as soon as they. Well, every man. Yeah, I do. My up. shit wake up like. You baby, know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, standing up. Hello, good morning. You have a, you have a constant reminder. <laughs> hey, get back in there. <laughs> the sun ain't even out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker wake up with the roots. That nigga's up. <laughs> that nigga looking around like, What you doing, sleep? We got work to do. <laughs> what are you doing down there? There's holes to be drilled. <laughs> and do you see all of this up here? <laughs> Man, please. What's your favorite thing to cook? Uh, salmon. You cook salmon? Absolutely. Bake? So many, yeah, yeah. For so, real? So many different types. I have a, like a teriyaki salmon. Uh, there's like I'm about a, to bring you on Martha and Snoop and let you cook, cuz. I, I can't wait. I'm about to have to bring I like the way you talking. You talking I real slick wait. on some, some real, how, what's that word when a nigga know how to cook? Uh, a chef? No, nigga, the other word. When they, you go to, yeah, that word. Okay. There you go. You know a little word like chef with T.I. on the show, nigga. <laughs> What's the name of that shit with the big guy to cook? <laughs> <laughs> they go 
gonna use a little word with you on the show. A chef? <laughs> uh, nigga? Hey man, speaking of cook, man, you know what I'm saying? I wanna say rest in peace to Auntie, man. She last time I was here, you know what I'm saying? She put on big Did for she? us. Yes, sir. Auntie Fee, she put yeah. on big for us, man. Yeah. Her, she had the time of her life. That's, her, that was uh, beautiful, man. Come her, on, nigga. Oh, get like a mother. Nigga, wasn't that like an old cookout? <laughs> Wasn't well, like an old cookout with, some, with some spades and dominoes. Yeah, man. She telling him he ain't shit. He said he said her food didn't taste <laughs> like it did. He was just fucking with her though. That shit was good. But see, that's what I love about the shit that I do, man. I like to have fun on some like like that's a moment right there, my nigga. Certainly. Man, Thanksgiving is shit. Please, yeah, please. Yeah, that shit was that shit would be it. That shit would be it. Mm. If you could remake any movie and star in it, what would it be? I could remake any movie and star in it, what would it be? Man on Fire. Denzel? Mm-hmm. That's when he was the, uh, the bodyguard? He was the security, yeah, for the little girl. Yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, that was Mexico nice City. Then. At the time, it was the kidnapping capital of the little world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, that would be my one. That's hard. <laughs> That's hard. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Read minds. Read minds? If I can read your mind, I can do anything else I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to do nothing now. I just need to read you. Just let me know what these people think. Nigga say, yeah, I'd like to. Come here for a minute. <laughs> oh, that's how you feel? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, Chip? I didn't even say anything. <laughs> nigga said, read niggas' minds. That's read cold. Mind. I can handle the real. You give me that? I'd be damned if I can't get everything else I need from now. <laughs> Niggas say, I'm telepathic. I can work this shit. This is the part of the show called Finish the Sentence. I'm going to start it. You finish it. All right. I always wake up with an erection. <laughs> You're the first nigga to say that, but it's facts. <laughs> if I could work with anybody dead or alive, I would want to work with Marvin Gaye and Tupac. Mm. If I could see anybody perform dead or alive, I'd want to see. Michael Jackson. I look for a blank in a woman. Too many things. If I wasn't a boss, I'd be a... President. <laughs> My favorite position is... Hmm. That depends on... That depends on the, the partner, see? <laughs> because, you know, you only go and enjoy what a motherfucker's best at. True. I like that answer. But I was talking about. Oh, that. position in life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm sorry. What you said, say he went, he went, I asked a sex question. He ain't got off sex yet. He... I thought you said, baby, that shit could be perceived many different ways. <laughs> I just wanted to get your perception of it. Uh, but my favorite position in life is a father. I love it. That's a great position. Pops. Paul, Paul. Soon to be. <laughs> Whoa, you don't, get, you put, don't you put Paul, that pain I, I, on I me, Ricky. I want you to be Paul Paul. <laughs> I'm tired of being the only motherfucking rapping grandfather. I can tell you niggas, come Man, join the club. Few, it's a few of y'all out there. It is, but they ain't, they ain't standing up to it. Them niggas hide. Uh, I'm standing up to it. Shit. My name is T.I. and I'm a... Uh, K. And you do know that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we want to thank y'all for tuning in to the DGN News Network. I want to thank my special guest, the King, T.I., Tip, family man, CEO, entrepreneur, okay, all of the above. Shit, you understand shit, me? I, t I told that's you, nigga. I told you, niggas, that do it for enough being cool, okay? Now, there you go. He couldn't take one to the head. Look at him. He didn't walk on out. enough being cool. Third quarter, two minutes left. He put it Next out. Next lesson. <laughs> know your limitations. <laughs> Color inside the line. <laughs> <laughs>